truth is there is no one typical day. You know, the days vary from day to day. And the fact that I don't necessarily have an office to go to means that my weekends are not necessarily weekends in that sense. Sometimes I'm working over the weekend. I wake up when my body wakes up, unless I have an appointment or a deadline. Um, and I struggled with that for a really long time because I thought, okay, in order to be productive, you have to wake up very early um, at the crack of dawn, you know, and get your day going. And I realized I wasn't being fair to myself because my natural body clock, I can stay up very late. Um, but I don't, I don't naturally wake up early um, unless something wakes me up or you know I have something urgent. So it took me a long time to unlearn some of these rules of life. Um, so I wake up, um, I try to eat breakfast, I try to sit down and catch up on emails or try to write, um, put my thoughts down on paper. I work from the dining room, um, which is connected to the living room, and it faces a big window, it faces a very big French window, and I look out and there's grass and there's ki there are kids playing outside. And that's really special for me because um, I'm very big on uh, light, especially natural light, and space, so I like this idea of feeling like the possibilities are endless. You know, I'm not in a small space. I'm in a, I'm in a large room, and I'm looking out, um, and it's beautiful because I see the sun setting, and I see the clouds. It gives me a sense that life is going on, and no matter you know what challenges I have, or I'm stuck, or I'm having a hard day, it, it's really useful to know that life will go on, and tomorrow is another day, and everything will pass. My sister lives not too far from me and she has four kids. So if I'm feeling like I need to see kids and be around kids and have that kind of energy, I, I go and stop by, see her, see the kids, um, put them to sleep, read them a bedtime story. And to be honest, that kind of brings it 360 because the storytelling um, is inspired by my seven-year-old niece who, since she was little, she's been asking for stories. She's very curious. And every day when I see her, she tells me, can you tell me a story? And so imagining stories for her and creating stories on the spot, or sometimes I ask her to tell me a story and she'll tell me a story. So it, it really helps to be around her, um, as well as my 90-year-old grandmother who tells me stories, um, stories of my mother and my aunts and my uncles and our childhood and uh, my grandfather and her mother. So it feels like it's uh, generations of stories that, that come alive in different ways. I sometimes record uh, her stories because I, she's getting older and older and I also realize she's not gonna be around um, forever. So it's very important for posterity, for us, for the kids that come after us to really know um, the history of the family, the history of their parents and their grandparents and their great-grandparents. Um, so these recordings are really important for me as well in terms of my storytelling and to understand who I am and where I've come from.